the Islamic ruling that allowed you to lie because if you didn't and you showed that you were Muslim, you would die. Upon the advent of the early Arab conquest of Rashidun Caliphate, the political entity that united the Muslims expanded massively. However, following the assassination of Ali ibn Abi Talib in 661, during the First Fitna, also known as the First Muslim Civil War, saw the overthrow of the Rashidun Caliphate and the establishment of the Umayyad dynasty as the rulers of the Caliphate. As Muawiyah I pressured his son and his successor, Hassan, to abdicate by telling him that it would bring peace to the Caliphate. Under the Umayyad banner, the Muslims continued their rapid expansion into modern-day Algeria, Morocco, Sindh, and most notably the Iberian Peninsula. Amidst a civil war in Visigothic Spain, the Umayyad governor of Tanger, Tariq ibn Zayed, led an army of 7,000 soldiers that landed on Gibraltar on the 30th of April, 711. In the same year, the Umayyad forces defeated King Roderick's Visigothic army at the Battle of Guadalata, leading to reinforcements being sent to ibn Zayed. This allowed for the continued advancement of Muslim forces across the Iberian Peninsula, and in only eight short years, the majority of the Iberian Peninsula was under the Muslim control, in which they established the Wilayat of Al-Andalus. Historians refer to the era of Islamic Spain as Al-Andalus, with the first reference of Al-Andalus being on a Umayyad coin in 715. Over time, the Muslim population increased steadily through conversion and settlement from Arabs and Amazigh, with the Muslim population in Al-Andalus being referred to as Moors by Western Christians at the time. Al-Andalus was also one of the leading and cultural centers throughout Europe and the Muslim world, due to the many scientific advancements such as in medicine, agronomy and astronomy, with the capital of Al-Andalus, Cordoba, being a major center for this scientific growth. With a vast number of advancements occurring during the rule of Abdel Rahman III from 929 to 961, which was made possible by the translation movement with Persian, Greek and Roman texts being converted into Arabic. Famous surgeon Abu al-Qasim al-Zahrawi, better known as Abu al-Qasis in the West, lived in Cordoba between 936 to 1013 in which he introduced over 200 surgical instruments. There was also many architectural developments in Al-Andalus, such as the Great Mosque of Cordoba, the Roman Bridge, and the Madinat al-Zahra. The arts, literature, and poetry all flourished within Al-Andalus. Despite the various religious groups, Christians, Muslims, and Jews all lived in relative peace, with Spanish historian Américo Castro describing this as convivienza, which means living together. However, throughout most of the history of Al-Andalus, it was in constant conflict against Christian kingdoms in the north. Immediately upon the Muslim conquest of Hispania began an 8th century long war between Christian kingdoms and Al-Andalus, in which the Christian kingdoms wanted to retake back control of the Iberian Peninsula and became known as the Reconquista. Beginning in 718, the kingdom of Asturias defeated the Umayyads at the Battle of Covadonga, which marked the beginning of the Reconquista. Over time, the Reconquistador slowly defeated the various Muslim nation-states within the Iberian Peninsula, with the kingdoms of Leon, Navarra, Aragon, Portugal, and Castile slowly making inroads through the peninsula. As a result, by 1218, the last Muslim stronghold, the Emirate of Granada, was established, which ruled a portion of the south of modern-day Spain. Muslim defeat was imminent, however, this was exacerbated through the marriage of Isabella and Ferdinand in 1468, and 11 years later, in 1479, they united the kingdoms of Aragon and Castile. This meant the Emirate could no longer exploit the divisions between the various Christian kingdoms. Ultimately, in 1482, the Granada War began, lasting until 1491 when the Muslims surrendered. As a result of the defeat, Muhammad VII of Granada, as well as the Catholic monarchs, signed a treaty. The treaty stated that the Muslims hand over the territory to the United Kingdom of Castile and Aragon, in which Muhammad VII had a two-month grace period to hand over the territory. The treaty also established various rights for the Muslims in which they could live peacefully and coexist with the Christians, in which the Muslims had no obligation to accept Christianity and could continue practicing Islam. Despite the fact that the Muslims were given protection following the fall of the Emirate of Granada, some of the Spanish clergy did not like this, such as Archbishop of Toledo, Francisco Jimenez de Cineros, in which he began a series of arrests detaining Muslims, forcing them to abandon Islam and accept Christianity. As a result of Firic's success with forced conversions, he intensified his efforts, in which he wrote to Pope Alexander VI, claiming that in one single day he managed to convert over 3,000 Muslims to Christianity. Cineros targeted their leches, the native Spanish Christians that converted to Islam, in which he imprisoned them if they refused to revert back to Christianity. One such case was in December 1499 in the city of Albasin in Granada, when a Muslim lady was detained by a constable. 
However, on the way to being questioned, she publicly shouted that she was being forced to accept Christianity. This sparked a hostile crowd in which the constable was subsequently killed, leading to a widespread revolt across the city of Al Basin, in which the streets were barricaded and the Muslims took up arms against the Christians. Upon the situation being defused, the Muslims handed in their weapons and the killers of the constable, who were subsequently executed. Though the leaders of the uprising fled the Abu Jara mountains, bringing the revolt to the region as they feared those policies of forced conversion would be imposed upon them as well. And in February 1500, it is estimated that around 80,000 Christian troops were mobilized to put down the rebellion. The Muslims defeated the rebels due to the fact they didn't have a central leader as well as a coherent strategy. Upon each defeat by the rebels, they were forced to accept baptism or they were killed. And sometimes they would outright slaughter Muslims. Such as when Catholic forces under Louis de Beaumont took 3,000 Muslim prisoners and then slaughtered them. Meanwhile, when Velafik was captured, all the men were killed and the women enslaved. Similar events happened at Nijar and Guajar Sira, where the whole population were enslaved. Meanwhile, the children were kidnapped and brought up as Christians. The Muslims again pursued for peace, putting down their weapons. Upon the defeat of the rebels, King Ferdinand gave the Muslims Muslims are ultimatum, accept baptism, exile or be killed. As the price to be given passage was 10 gold doublets, however the majority of Muslims at the time could not afford to pay such a large fee. Furthermore, the Castilian authorities implemented policies that would make such a large exodus impossible, such as the prohibition of migrating to Ottoman territories as they feared their growing influence across the Mediterranean, or the fact when the people of Teresa were fleeing to North Africa, they were slaughtered on the way. A further edict issued on the 17th of September 1502 forbade the newly converted Muslims to leave Castile within the next two years. As a result, Conversion was the only means of survival, with the entire Muslim population of Granada nominally converting to Christianity by the start of the 1500s. These new converts to Islam were called the Moriscos, or New Christians. Upon the threat of death, these Moriscos were pressured to conform to the Christian way of life. This included regular church attendances, being obligated to send their children to be instructed in the Christian doctrine, as well as partaking in food and beverages forbidden by the Sharia, such as pork and wine, as any rejection of the Christian way of life would mean death. This this was later extended to the Kingdom of Aragon in 1526. Throughout history, the majority of Islamic scholars supported the idea of emigration in such a climate, with an increase in Islamic rulings known as fatwas during the 15th century due to the imminent Reconquista victory, which often reiterated the idea that one should leave a non-Muslim country and migrate to a land that doesn't compromise one's religion. This was particularly supported in the Maliki branch of Islamic jurisprudence, which was the dominant school of thought for Islamic matters in North Africa, Sicily, and Iberian Peninsula. Most notably in the 1491 fatwa, the supreme method and pure source on the rules of notarization by Ahmed ibn Yahya al Sharisi, who was an Algerian Amazigh theologian and one of the leading authoritative figures for the Iberian Muslims. The fatwa states that the Muslims living in the newly conquered Christian kingdoms have to migrate as they would not be able to fully adhere to the practices of Islam as remaining in a Christian ruled territory would contaminate their faith as well as subsequent generations. Similarly, Spanish Muslim scholar Muhammad al-Mawak wrote a fatwa in the 15th century stating if their parents have the capacity to emigrate or leave from the abode of war of a land of the unbelievers without danger or fear, then it is not permitted to them to remain there. Another such example was a fatwa proclaimed by Muhammad ibn Ali al-Ansari al-Hafa in which he states, it is not permitted for a Muslim who has the capacity to emigrate from exposure to the infidels to remain among them. This is because of the Islamic idea that the ideal society is where Muslims are in the majority and the Christians are a protected minority. Due to the difficulty of migrating to Muslim lands, in conjunction with the life or death situation that the Moriscos were living through, was Muslims in 1505 free to seek guidance with Ahmed ibn Abi Juma al-Wahrani, known as the Mufti of Oran. He also was an Algerian Maliki theologian, declaring a fatwa in 1504 known as the Oran Fatwa, which set out regulations on how the Moriscos should practice Islam in secrecy. The fatwa affirms that a person must follow the basic tenets of Islam, though the extent was severely diminished with a general relaxation of the obligatory actions. Essentially, they had to practice in a way that would allow them to survive. This derives from the Islamic concept takia, which means one can lie in order to survive. This fatwa provided the basis for Islamic practice Practices amongst the Morisco communities. According to historian L.P. Harvey, Al Wahrani opens the fatwa by stating, Know that idols are carved wood and hard stone, which can cause you no harm 
and can do you no good. And it is to Allah that the kingdom belongs. Allah did not take to himself a son and alongside him there is no other God. So he is the one you must worship and you must display perseverance in your adoration of him. Firstly, the obligatory ritual prayer of Salah was mandatory upon all Muslims. However, leeway was given if it could not be performed correctly with slight movements even being acceptable in which Salah could be done with just eyelid movements. And if necessary, Salah could also be done in the toilets to not be caught by the authorities. Furthermore, if someone could not complete a prayer during the day, they could make up for it during the night time. Meanwhile, the ablution done prior to performing the salah, known as wudu, was also relaxed, in which someone could do dry purification, known as tayammum, with clean objects such as stone or mud or sand. If that couldn't be done, they could touch a clean wall and do tayammum. And even if that was difficult, they could make the gesture of touching a clean surface and making wudu. Al-Wahrani goes on to state that one must continue to give zakat as it states that showing generosity towards a beggar can count as zakat. Furthermore, Al-Wahrani states that ghusl can also be completed by simply plunging into a sea. Furthermore, the Moriscos were allowed to eat pork and drink wine if they were forced to by the Christians. The fatwa permitted Muslims to outwardly participate in Christian rituals and worship such as if they were forced to prostrate to idols which was against the basic tenets of Islam or if they were told to say something blasphemous against the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or whether they had to venerate and deify Jesus and Mary in line with Catholic theology. Al-Wahrani reaffirms the permissibility of a Muslim man marrying a Christian woman. However, a Muslim woman marrying a Christian man should be avoided and if done for survival, the Muslims should know that this is clearly forbidden. This idea is present throughout the fatwa with Al-Wahrani stating that one should have the correct intention while performing these acts that go against Islam, such as when being forced to prostrate to a Christian idol think of Allah while doing the action or in the event they were forced to curse something in Islam such as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Al-Wahrani encouraged to mispronounce the name while doing so at the end of the fatwa it affirms that this is not permanent but rather a temporary fix for the hostile political climate in which he believed that the Muslims would retake back control of Spain the fatwa reached many parts of the Iberian Peninsula with a translation of it being in the al Jamiado script dating to 1564 in which al Jamiado was Castilian Spanish in the Arabic text. During the same time in 1567, a Mawlid poem was written known as the Morisco of Al Madha. The Moriscos also made copies of the Quran with it being in the Al-Jamiado script, though in most cases Moriscos would hide Quranic verses on walls and ceilings. Another such example was the 1606 Quran of Toledo, a manuscript copy translated to Castilian Spanish. Furthermore, it is noted throughout Castile, crypto-Muslims started to consume pork and alcohol in excess in order to appear extra Christian to the old Christians. The fatwa can also be seen in the works of Morisco writer known as the young man of Aravallo, who wrote a series of accounts circa the 1530s describing the living situation of crypto muslims in spain his most notable work was the tafsira which was not a commentary of the quran but rather an analysis of islamic jurisprudence as well as the living situation of morisco communities across the iberian peninsula in which he affirms that the moriscos were using christian worship as a means of replacement for islamic rituals as in his writings he also talks about how a secret congregational prayer by the Morisco took place. According to Harvey, Moriscos tried to infiltrate Christianity with the lead books of Sacramento, which was found in Sacramento, a hillside outside the old city of Granada, Spain, between 1595 and 1606, a book that was translated from Arabic to Spanish, claiming itself to be dated to the first century, and stated many things that contradicted Christian practices at the time and was more in line with Islamic theology, such as the dismissal of icons, the Trinity, the worship of Jesus as the incarnate Son of God, and the use of wine in the Eucharist. It also has a line similar to the Islamic testimony of faith Faith, the Shahada, as it states there is no God but God and Jesus is the Spirit of God. A prolonged investigation by the Holy Office in Rome concluded in 1682 that both the parchment and the lead books were heretical forgeries. The Catholic and Spanish authorities were aware of this document being distributed, as by 1565 the 1526 policy of persuasion was replaced with oppression. This included a widespread ban of many Morisco practices, as the Archbishop of Granada believed that the Moriscos would never be true Christians, in which an array of policies were implemented to eradicate any remnants of Islam and Arab culture. Firstly, the use of Arabic language was banned, and any material in the language would be an immediate prison sentence. This also extended to the use of Arab names and traditional garments. Furthermore, the privacy of the Moriscos was infringed upon, as they were instructed to keep their homes open on Fridays so they wouldn't be performing congregational prayer. This was also 
extended to Eid. The Moriscos were also pressured to show gratitude towards Jesus and if they didn't, it would be considered blasphemy. And if someone spoke positively of Islam and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, would be accused of apostasy. And at the time, all forms of apostasy would mean death, as well as a stain on the family name blocking social mobility, with the number of baths taken up by Moriscos being scrutinised in order to make sure they were not performing wudu for secret salah. Furthermore, public baths on Sunday were banned as crypto Muslims would perform purification on this day before being pressured to attend church, which was a means of substitute as ghusl on Friday before Juma is a recommended practice within Islam. Children of Morisco households would be taken to be brought up learning Christian customs, forgetting their origins. Moriscos were also encouraged to tell authorities of who was practising in Islam, such as in 1606 when Maria Paez accused her whole family of practicing Islam, though in some regions Christian nobility showed tolerance towards the Muslims, such as Sancho de Cardona, the Admiral of Aragon, allegedly allowed the Muslims to build a mosque and openly recite the Adhan, in which he was subsequently targeted by the Spanish Inquisition, where they gave him a life sentence for openly allowing the practice of Islam. Another such example was the Duke of Sergobe, who allowed the Moriscos under his governorship in the town Valle de Uxio to openly operate a madrasa. Eventually, the distrust of the Mirsko community was too much when King Philip III of Spain declared a decree on the 9th of April 1609 in which he stated the immediate expulsion of all Moriscos from Spain as the general consensus amongst the old Christians was that the Moriscos would never be true Christians and would always be Muslim, leading to 275 to 300,000 Moriscos migrating to the Maghrebi coast or the Ottoman city of Galata.